yeah, if you think you're going to do it in your own strength, then you know what? Yeah, you can do it. COVID, it's been helping people move their businesses from offline or brick and mortar to online. Systems yeah. are more important than skills as an entrepreneur today. It's yes. totally okay to reinvent yourself yes. multiple times, especially when you're an entrepreneur. Welcome to Profitable Coaching Conversations with Wendy Y. Bailey. If you're a coach, speaker, or industry expert, you're in the right place for sales and marketing wisdom and insight to grow your coaching business. Now, here's your host, Income Acceleration Mentor, Wendy Y. Bailey. So hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Profitable Coaching Conversation show. This is a special guest episode featuring Ken MacArthur. I've known this man for a number of years. We were talking before we got the recording started. And, you know, he is an amazing guy. He's been around for a while and he's made a lot of contributions to the marketplace. We're going to get into some of that today. But the big thing I want you to know is Ken's um, message, his platform is called um, Impact How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World. It started with a book and now he's got a movie. So I'm excited to talk to him. Welcome, Ken. So great to be here and, and great to see you again, Wendy. Why? <laughs> it's good to see you too. You know, it's been a long time, but you know, I feel like I've still seen you in the marketplace. So I've kind of kept up with what you've been up to and all that good stuff. Tell us a little bit, first of all, about the book. I know you wrote the book. It's been a while ago, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Everything has been a while. You know, yeah. I, I started in the dark ages of the oh, internet. Stop, stop, <laughs> I stop, did. Stop. I was around. You are an internet OG. That I know. <laughs> like whenever I've gone to your events, I met like some of the original internet marketers. Oh, yeah. have just been around a long time and you're one of those. It's uh, it's been a fun ride, you know, all of the different things and and the book that you talked about impact how to get noticed motivate millions and make a difference in a noisy world that was written because I saw at my live events, which I was doing ar around the, the country by that time, uh, I saw how people's lives were changes changed and, and, and really impacted in ways that they had no idea. And in the smallest things, you know, I think the biggest impact is always in the smallest actions. And just by showing up at a live event, uh, I saw every single time that people's lives were changed. There were introductions to people that have lasted, you know, 20, 30 years now over the course of all the things that we've gone through together. And that impact uh, just by existing and just by showing up is so much bigger than people ever imagined because I think people think, uh, you know, there's 7 billion people on the planet and I don't really, you know, how am I supposed to make a difference? You know, there's all this horrible stuff going on. What am I supposed to do about it? And the truth is that just by existing, uh, you know, I always say you make a difference whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. That's not a feel good message, by the way, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. a realism message. Yeah, that, that's, like, yeah. that's like, that's uh, like, you know, if, if a mother does nothing with their child, there's horrible results from that, you know, so um, the so you can that I choose. Had when you said it, yeah, was these, these uh, public figures who say I'm not a role model, um, right. just because I play basketball, or just right. because I, you know, act in movies or whatever. But whether you want to or not, you're making an impact, negative or positive. Yeah, you know, absolutely, so. absolutely right. And and you don't have to be a celebrity to have a, have that impact either. So you're just by existing, you're you're having an impact on thousands of people over the course of your life. And the truth is that if we leverage art, science, and technology, uh, we can impact millions of people. And it, it's guaranteed. It's not like it's it's it's. Uh, it's hard to do. We make choices every single day that that impact people. And that's what I've been trying to show ever since then, you know. And tell me the year you published the book and it was a best selling book. What was the Oh jeez. Now I I have no idea. <laughs> it's been don't a while you know, ago. Yeah, Are we yeah, talking 20 years or something? 2009 or something. Yeah. I don't know when it yeah, was. Something like that. I remember, and since then you've created a somewhat of a movement. So talk a little bit about how you went from the book 
to the movement and now you've got a movie out. So yeah. talk a little bit about that, that journey and how that is shaped up for you. Well, there's, there's a really interesting story in everything that anybody does, you know, if you, if you spend enough time <laughs> to talk to them, but it was just doing one thing after another. I have this, I have this concept that, uh, you know, everything that you've done in the past, all that stuff that I did before makes absolutely no difference to this moment right now, because everything that I've done in the past is over, you know, it's going to have good impact, it's going to have bad impact, there's nothing it's I can do about happened. that impact, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and if, if, uh, I don't know how, if you've ever been reminded of this, but I've been reminded on several occasions that we don't have tomorrow, you know, there were times in my life where, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> where I woke I like, up what are you getting ready to say, yeah, <laughs> I could tell you stories about some of those moments in time. You know, there was a time when I got up and had breakfast one day, choked on something and thought that I wasn't going to get through the moment, you know, mm. that moment. So we don't know. It was an ordinary day. It was, and I was doing nothing special and I was in decent health and I wasn't out uh, in bad traffic or doing something dangerous. I was eating breakfast and something went down the wrong pipe my nose was clo uh, clogged up from a little bit of sinus stuff that was going on mm -hmm. instantly i had no air and i was on the set i was on in the basement of my house and my son was asleep two two stories up but i'm thinking you know i i'm going up the stairs i don't even have any water here i'm looking at the phone as i go by the phone in the kitchen and i'm saying i could be dead by the time an ambulance gets here to to revive me because you can't go that long without air you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i managed to just you know try and be as calm as i possibly could to force a little bit of air in and out and and um and that moment managed to pass you know i managed to get some air out and a yeah. tiny bit of air in a, a little bit and but that moment stuck with me and and you'll see it in the movie if you actually watch the movie you'll see a kind of a reenactment of that uh, of that scene that moment that realization that we don't have the future so if we don't have the past and we don't have the future what's the most important impact that we can make right now mm -hmm. i'd say to you right this second that wendy y bailey and uh and the people that are listening to this uh, broadcast are the most important people in my life because those are the only people that I can impact in any possible way. Mm -hmm. right so I've been, I've been trying to, to, to spread that message because it really hit home to me. It just woke, woke me up and I lived my life differently ever since. So for me, so? it's always in the moment. Yeah. It's, how so? What, what is, what was, your life like before and what choices do you make now because of that experience that you had how well, has I've, your life changed i've always been a curious creature and and i've always wanted to learn from people and explore new things you know when 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 things were starting out i was uh at first the affiliate guy because i built a site that was went into the top three thousand sites on the on the internet which was called affiliate showcase mm -hmm. and then i was the jv guy because i did uh some joint ventures and brought a bunch of the top marketers in the world together mm -hmm. and went to 362 out of all the sites on the internet in in the first uh day of pre-launch and mm -hmm. and then i was uh i was the info product guy because i took Sterling Valentine and I mentored him because I thought that maybe I could teach people how to create information products. And we did uh, a 90 day challenge to make over $100,000 in, in 90 days and to, uh, we added 10,000 people. I told y'all he's business. an OG, I told you. <laughs> like, I, I, I want you guys to hear the receipts he's giving you. Uh, I'm telling you, you've done some amazing things. Don't let me stop a, you. I just had no, 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 no. Yeah. So, so it's an adventure, right? It, it, it's an adventure in every moment of that story. But up to that point, I'd just been doing interesting things. And then I sat down and, uh, you know, Jack Canfell wrote a, a, a book called Success Principles. Mm -hmm. And I'd never really read books like that. Um, 
you know, motivational kinds of books or success oriented books or those kinds of things. I, I did read his book because he sent me a, he personally sent me a copy yeah. and I said, well, if he sent me to it, if he sent this to me, I should read it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I read the book and there was a thing, an exercise in there that said, um, uh, you know, create a mission statement, basically. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about what the mission was. Uh, what is the mission? What's the purpose of my life? And at that point, I was thinking along the lines of I want to help as many people make a decent living online as I possibly can. And I mean, decent in every sense of the word, like uh, that uh, they can be proud of what they're doing that they could go to their friends or their family and say, look, I, I'm doing something that's that's really meaningful and decent in that you could earn enough money that you could make a decent living uh, through through that. Not that you would necessarily get rich, but but that you would be able to care for the people that you cared about and that you'd be able to take uh, care of the needs that you had for monetary things. And so those were kind of the purposes that I had at that point. But I think beyond that, the moment that changed when I started to realize, what if you only have this instant? Mm -hmm. What if you only have this moment right now? I think we all wanna live what I would call a significant life. Mm -hmm. So I mean, significant in, in the, from the standpoint of, you know, our life mattered in some way, you know, there was a difference whether we were born or not. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, that positive, it could be positive or it could be negative. And hopefully it's positive because I wanted to help as many people as I could make uh, their lives significant to have impact in their personal life, you know, so that so that uh, their living made a difference to the world and made it hopefully a better place. So that just became all consuming for me. And the way that it, it, it manifested itself was that I. I honed the message, number one, because if we want to impact more people, if we want to leverage art, science, and technology in powerful ways, uh, then what we need to do is we need to think about that process. And I developed a, what I call the impact action plan, which is all around uh, how do you hone that message? Because there's certain key things that actually have to take place if you want to spread a message. Number one, you got to be able to remember it in the first place, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and you have to get other people to spread it because you can only spread your message to so many people. So if nobody else tells anybody else, then you aren't going to get to millions of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the idea has to stick in your mind and you have to be able to remember it. And it has to be simple enough for people to be able to actually repeat that message. And that's a, a really interesting exercise you can try with your own messages, you know, try, try telling your message to someone and then asking them to repeat that back to you and see what the results are. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the old uh, conversation game that we used to have where we'd pass a message around and come out it's garbage in, at the yeah, end. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, the thing I thought about is um, a couple of years ago, I went to a conference and I ended up winning a session with Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. Yeah. Right. And uh, one of the first things he asked me was, what was my mission statement? And I was like, uh, duh, duh, duh. Yeah. he was like, no, you need to know that it needs to just roll out of your head, you know, <laughs> because you're committed to it. It's what should guide and drive every decision you make every day of your life. And I was like, OK, I think I got it now. It's now on my wall. There you go. In my office. So I and didn't I didn't that everywhere. make a difference for you in, it did. in terms of the focus? Because it's a reminder to ourselves. What are you really trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. simplified mine, Wendy, and you'll think you'll think this is pretty uh, arrogant, but but I figure with today and the and the six degrees of separation and how many people I already know that I've impacted along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. I just finally simplified my goal to impact everybody. So, <laughs> so there but you go. But I get it. But I get it. Um, you know, interesting that this example comes to mind for me now, but I heard Will Smith's mission statement and it was to inspire everyone. Yeah. So go. I get it. You know, the simpler it is, the easier it is to, to remember and live by. You know, and because plus, that's really what a mission statement is supposed to do. It's it's a guiding principle, if you will, for how you live your life and the choices you make. 
and and, and the other the other key element to to that is impact everybody right now because mm -hmm. this is the moment that you got Present. to impact in other words i'm here 100 percent for you wendy <laughs> right in this instant everything i can do uh to make a difference for for you yeah. and you know i was doing research for the the movie um and uh the movie is actually centered within a five mile radius of philadelphia city hall and it it, it deals with people from all walks of life and and how small actions really make a difference you know mm -hmm. and one of the within that five mile radius around philadelphia city hall there's the power brokers of city hall you know the big politicians and all of those people but there's also some of the worst drug infested neighborhoods of the city or in in fact the country you know if you go into kensington and, and fairhill what they call the badlands of philadelphia it's a it's a pretty uh it's a pretty terrible pay uh, place for some people and uh, to see those interactions. So I went undercover <laughs> in in the badlands of, of Philadelphia wow. uh, uh, as an Uber driver and uh, and and was meeting people that were down there in that area. And just moments that I had with people driving around in an Uber. Uh, you would think that that, you know, how are you going to make a difference as an Uber driver, right? Oh, no, no, but, no, no. But, oh. You can make a difference anywhere. At exactly. Any time, no matter exactly. how brief the time. Yeah. I Uber a lot when I travel and I have like a standard conversation starter with my Uber drivers. How long have you been driving? Is this the only thing you do? Do you enjoy it? What do you yeah. like about it? So that's that's sort of like a standard dialogue. Yeah. And I remember I was in Indianapolis and I got an Uber driver who was, I want to say he was in his early 20s. And when we started talking, and you know I, I could tell he was looking for some insight some wisdom so i ended up coaching him right yeah. and so when i got out of the car i knew that i had made an impact because i was like to use your word no no pun in, yeah pun intended <laughs> yes pun intended i knew i had made an impact because i left him thinking how is what i'm doing in terms of my education driving the uber getting back to my education going to help me to, to achieve the things I really want to achieve. That's impact. So yeah, I totally get it. It doesn't matter how long or the scenario or the situation. I'm looking forward to, to seeing the movie. I was going to ask you who played you in the movie, but it sounds <laughs> like you played yourself, right? <laughs> Actually, I did not play myself. This is a, oh, this okay. is a, I, I played, a, I did play a, a part in the movie, mostly because it's hard to get people uh, to show up sometimes and be uh, reliable. I don't know if you've yeah. ever noticed that. Yeah. So I had to step in a couple of times. Uh, and and it's kind of a, a tradition for directors of, of movies to kind of do a little cameo in there for fun. So I And you I've directed act, the movie too? I I wrote the screenplay, I directed it, I um I produced the movie and uh and I even wrote a couple of songs that are in the movie for the uh, yeah Clint for the, Eastwood in the making, because you know that's that <laughs> sounds like Clint Eastwood. He would he he writes, he directs. He yeah. writes the music, he plays in the movie, he plays the piano. Yeah. Like that that sounds like Clint Eastwood to me. Yeah. I was, I was just watching I was just watching a, a little bit of Clint Eastwood a couple of days ago and there's this movie I think it's called Cliff no, uh, the Iger Sanction. Did you ever see him in the Iger oh, Sanction? Yeah, yeah. I'm not climbing any mountains like that. <laughs> <laughs> not doing that kind of mountain climbing. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Because when I say mega everything, he he has done it all. You know? Oh, yeah. So and he's still going in, the, in his 80s, right? He sure is. I watched, what did I watch of his movies? One of, one of his recent movies. Oh, I know what it was, The Mule. Yeah. The Mule yeah. was was one of his latest movies, and I was like, "Poor he he's an old guy, Ken. He's he's yeah. like he's like you know ninety he's something. Up there. He's now, he's you know? almost older than me. Yeah, he's <laughs> definitely older than you. Don't even try it. Don't even try yeah. it. So, what was it like for you to 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 do all of that and bring like your your phil philosophy and your your decades long work around impact to a movie like? you know, the screenplay, you directed it, you, you know, starred in it at times. What was that whole experience like for you? 
it was like one step at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was a dream that was sitting in the back of my head. And, um, and I actually um, had kind of uh, started this process, I wrote a, uh, a manifesto called the impact manifesto. And it was for a project mm -hmm. by uh, Seth Godin, uh, called change this in which they had all kinds of amazing writers write manifestos uh and i mean it's like a who's who's list of, sure. of people that wrote the manifestos and my uh, manifesto was actually selected for that and it was uh basically around the 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 um the themes of impact and how small actions make a huge difference and it was a little little story and, and an illustration of that made that point and uh so I eventually uh, decided, what if I could put this impact manifesto into a short film? And so I did a short film uh, project uh, that was based on that manifesto and, and kind of put it because there's something about a movie, you know, that that allows you to tap into all the different arts, you know, the the like we said, there's music in there, there's drama in there, there's, there's visuals, there's sound, there's all these different things that we can pull into their storytelling. Mm -hmm. So all of those powerful things that we can put into a movie in one art form. And so I did that partially just to see if I could do it. In other words, it's not an easy task. I, I, I'll just let you know a clue in advance. It's not an easy task to to, no uh, to do a movie. <laughs> it it, it didn't you, sound easy even when it, you described. If you yeah. knew how hard it was, you'd never do it in a billion years. But mm -hmm. but and, and very often famous directors get to the end of their movie and they say, "I'll never do it again." And then I think it's a little bit like childbirth after the pain has passed. You, yeah. you eventually say, "Well, yeah. maybe I'll do it again." You you don't know anything. About about that what are you talking about yeah <laughs> I, i've heard it. hints along the yeah, way yeah. yeah yeah you don't remember i know people who know people having a baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah but anyway uh i do know about making a movie and and i do know that it takes a community so i started building a community of filmmakers and i've actually built a community of people who uh, love filmmaking and stuff over 6,500 people now wow. um, okay. in the Philadelphia area. Uh, and, uh, and we help them find jobs and we, we share uh, resources and stuff like that. And I built that community basically because I knew I wanted to make a movie. I knew I didn't know anything about making a movie at that time, certainly and that i should get really expert advice so i i did the, Assemble the experts yeah yeah exactly and so um i i uh i did the impact manifesto primarily as a as a way to see if i could even possibly do something like a movie and then i started uh writing the screenplay actually based on a, a true story that came into one of my live events, a Jamaican immigrant came into one of my live events and, and he shared a story and he wasn't sure he wanted the story to get out of how he, uh, he went kind of undercover to support a young girl in, in his neighborhood who was being extorted by a, a judge, an assistant DA, a whole ring of uh people uh parole officers and they were getting young kids that were in trouble and they were threatening them if they didn't uh make payoffs to send them off to state prison mm. and um and so he was part of what eventually brought down that whole ring and I, and it was a very inspiring story to me and my screenplay is not that story but it's based on uh, it, it was inspired by that idea so I went to a, a three-time Academy Award-winning screenwriter and producer, and she helped me uh, craft some of the screenplay. And I worked with people in the area, and we cast, and we got over 2,000 actors that wanted to be in the movie. And, <laughs> and, wow. and it was a process. It was just, it was, uh, you should realize that it took me basically 
almost a decade to, from from the idea I believe to it. having it now. Yeah, I believe uh, it. And a lot of movies are that that way, actually, that you see that you see on the silver screen all the time, those things that you think are classics, you think that they just showed up, you know, this week, it's the flavor of the week. But no, somebody has been working on that for years. I just posted something on my Facebook about uh, Columbo mm. and um, Mark Ruffalo, the actor yep. Mark Ruffalo is is the new Columbo. And I read it in an article and I just you know, save the image on the article without holding the onto the article. And so when I posted it, it was just the photo. Yeah. And I have not been able to find anything that says it's actually happening. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like it was an image, it had an R rating, it was like coming spring 2022. But everything I've, I was able to find after the article, even though it was attached to an article, I didn't pull the article in. Yeah. you know said that he's been pushing this since like 2014. There you he's go. been wanting to get this movie made or reboot Columbo in some way yeah. and he's still working on it. Yeah. So I get it. Like I totally get it. There was a question I wanted to ask you. You said art, science and technology. Mm. Why those three disciplines of all the we... possibilities <laughs> why those three? Yeah, I, I guess because I've been interested in all of those and I've played around with all of those. So um, I have a master's in choral conducting uh, that I that I, I built that? along the way, what, what's <laughs> directing that? choirs. <laughs> uh, okay, you have a master's in that? Yeah, I, I, I directed uh, orchestras and choirs and did uh, all kinds of uh, fun stuff for a decade or more. You know, people don't realize, here's an interesting thing, Wendy, everything that you know about me was probably, you know, from my, uh, well, it was certainly from my 60s on, probably, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and people think, you know, he's been around and doing this stuff forever. But, but I didn't start any of the things that, that people remember me from uh, today uh until i was over 50 years old mm -hmm. so uh, i wrote my first book i think at, at 50 so so there you go uh and then you know my first short film was in my 60s and and i didn't finish this movie until i was in my 70s so wow. you know uh people think that age is a limitation for you that you can't uh you can't do something because not true yeah, not true. And and people also think money is the limitation, and mm -hmm. and uh, they don't realize that that um, that I didn't put a single cent of my own money into this into this film. Wow. Uh, it it was funded through a, a Kickstarter campaign. We did a feature film with um 60 plus actors and 30 plus locations in a in what i think is a really really professional format got a distributor for it it's up live on amazon prime right now you can just search for the impact factor and you can watch it now and that was done on what turned out we did a twenty six thousand dollar plus um uh kickstarter campaign right mm -hmm uh but this the is sad, not budget for a movie well well here's the here's the part here's the secret sauce here too <laughs> uh you don't get all that money you know we successfully it was at one time it was the top uh four i think in the world film uh projects on on kickstarter, kickstarter. and mm -hmm. still I mean, we we were amazingly successful in lots of ways, but still, we only returned sixteen thousand dollars of that twenty six thousand dollars was all that we actually got to put in the bank, because people don't realize, you know, Kickstarter, they that you know somebody will back your project and then uh, they, their card doesn't get charged for three months or or however long your your um, your campaign goes. So by that time, maybe their expiration uh, uh, date has changed or they don't have the money available or mm -hmm. it's a large amount and it doesn't go through. So after fees and everything else, we, we did all of this on a $16,000 budget. 
So well, 20, 26 was a small budget, but 16 <laughs> was like, I don't know how you did it. Well, and especially when you look at these mil hundreds and millions of dollars that that are the budget yeah. for most major movies. You know? and, and people told me that it was impossible. And, and I said, I'm making a movie. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to be part of it? And we did yeah, it. You know? yeah. So that's the thing. So, very cool. Very yeah. cool. So, you know, the, the thing that I, I see and hear when I listen to you and when I, I talk with you, Ken, is there's so much, um, there's so many lessons that you've learned along the way that make your life easier, that have made your work possible. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't, I didn't start out, um, I had lots of advantages. Let me, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was born into a family that loved me and cared about me and told mm -hmm. me that I could do anything that I wanted to. Um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't live in a, a neighborhood that was oppressive. We weren't rich, but we always had enough uh, food to eat and, and stuff like that. I had a, halfway decent brain, you know, mm -hmm. I, I had an education, I had lots of things to support me all, along the way. And I know how hard it was for me along the way with all of those advantages. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I, I'll tell you what my one big glaring flaw, flaw. do you want to know it? <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> So, so here's my here's my 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 biggest fault, and my biggest fault is that uh, I absolutely do not have the ability to condemn anybody else. Oh, <laughs> I, I just cannot do it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't care what you've done. I've I've had uh, I've had friends that were convicted child offenders. Uh, you know, I've had I've had uh, the list could go on. But I just cannot condemn people. And, and the angriest that people ever get at me personally is typically because I do not condemn uh, somebody else. Yeah. And and the reason that I don't condemn anybody else is because I know how hard it was for me along the way. You know, life is hard, and then you die, and then you get buried. And well, you know, you've heard that. You've heard that. You've heard that thing. Uh, yeah. The worms eat you, and, yeah. and be thankful yeah. that uh, that it's in that order. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I um, I know how lucky I am, and I know how fortunate we all are in our own ways, uh, and but but life is is difficult i had a friend just recently on facebook uh say and and he's a he's a person who is uh, let's just say that uh he really shouldn't have to worry for money for the rest of his life okay mm -hmm. but he says i always fear that that i'm not going to have enough you know that i'm going to get to the end of my life and i will have worked to do all this stuff and and it will not not be enough wow and and it really comes from i think i think it comes from a fear of what could happen because we all know what could happen we we see people around us in circumstances that are much worse than we are um you know every single day whether it's health uh situations or Mm -hmm. or it's uh, financial situations or all of the myriad of, of terrible things that can can happen happen to people and i think especially in today's uh, environment a lot of people are living in fear because uh, mm -hmm. we're afraid of what what is going to happen and i i try to remind people that this moment is the moment that we have yeah. that's happening right now Exactly. You know? Usually people worry or have anxiety because of what happened in the past yeah. or they experience fear because of what happened in the past or what they have no control of related yeah. to the future. Exactly. I, I heard someone say that in an interview, it was an actress, and I'm just like, wow, that was profound. Yeah. When you stay in the present moment, the, the fear of the past or anxiety or worry of the future just are not part of it. 
like right. they become non-existent. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear you well, say that. Well, what we have is we have right now this moment, you know, and I'm getting to talk to you and, and it's fun and exciting and you're a great interviewer and, and I, I'm loving the time together, you know, and I'm, gr uh, I'm grateful that we get a chance to maybe impact somebody else in, in, in ways that we can't even imagine. I mean, I've had people I know that I've had an impact and the way that I know I've had an impact is because people have been coming up to me now for decades and, uh, and saying, you don't know it, but you know, I heard this, or you said this, or, or I met this person because, you know, you did, you chose to do this event and I chose to can't to come, you know, and, and there's marriages and births. I got people that credit me with their, their children. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I'm going, I've got, look, uh, I, I've, I've had one people, present moment at a time, right? Exactly. I mean, I, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying to them, I, 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 I've had, uh, extreme, uh, extremely positive things said to me lots of times over the years. So I know I'm not God. I know I'm not the devil. I must mm -hmm. be somewhere in between. <laughs> So, so and that works right yeah and that works that works for me so uh it, for me it's just it's in the moment it's one step at a time and when we get overwhelmed and when we feel and we all feel that way right because sure. there's always so much there's always so much to do i mean my my big problem if you want to know what the biggest problem is is that i i got so much i want to do yeah. But I just can't get it. I, I'm not going to be yeah. able to do it all. I'm not going to be able to go out there and hang from a cliff like uh, Clint Eastwood did. <laughs> and it might be fun you to sure do. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Is, is yeah, that I'd really like to try out lots of If I if I was uh, you know 40 years younger, yeah. and if I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, all of those things you know that we want to do. I get it. I totally yeah. get it. So, Ken, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll walk through our signature Profitable Wisdom segment. Sound good? Great. Sounds great. Hi, awesome. I'm Ken MacArthur, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episode goes live. Hi, I'm Charvette Mitchell, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversation Show with Wendy Y. Bailey like comment review and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episodes go live hi i'm lynn Sherrell, and you're tuned into the profitable coaching conversations show with wendy y bailey like comment review and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episode goes live so welcome back we're talking with ken MacArthur. he's been talking about his journey around this concept of impact and making an impact based on your being in your present moment now we're going to move into our signature segment so what who has had the greatest influence on you in your life ken you know i i think more than anybody else in, in my life uh i i have to kind of uh, center in on my father uh, he was a presbyterian minister and he he never felt like he was um, uh, intellectually gifted. Let me put it mm. that way. He okay. went to he went to Princeton Theological Seminary, which was a very um, uh, kind of a uh, scholarly uh, institution. You know, took a lot mm -hmm. of work. So I think maybe at, during that experience of being there, around the same time that Einstein was around, <laughs> around Princeton, yeah. Uh, Maybe, maybe he didn't that feel kind smart, of, huh? he, did, he didn't feel yeah. that smart, you know, so he always told me I was so much smarter than he was. Uh, but, uh, but uh, about 50 years uh, in, uh, when he was about 50 years old, I think he found his true calling and it was really uh, in working with older people. So he was a retirement administrator and uh, the uh, administrator of a retirement center and later actually went on to do all kinds of, of crazy things he's he's been um he's got a building named after him he was on the board of directors of the board of pensions for the presbyterian church which was sitting up there with billionaire you know uh folks uh, managing all kinds of uh, funds and stuff like that um 
And I think I don't know if he ever really felt the impact of his life. But what I saw every single day was a person who who didn't judge a person who lifted everybody up in the moment, a person who was giving and forgiving and had had faith that uh, things were going to work out, even if uh, life was changing all around him. And that kind of an example sticks with you, you know, and I saw the love that he generated uh, all around him. And uh, I probably wanted a little bit of that, you know, I, I, I wanted that, that, uh, that, that knowledge that you have impacted people. And I said, I think that's probably the, the person that had, you know, the single most impact in my life. Now, there were tons and tons of other people along the way. So uh, if you ask me on a different day, I could give you 20 more examples. But yeah. that's the one that comes to the mind today. That's great. You know, the, the thing that I don't think you realize when they're alive that you you totally get in a different way when they're no longer here in physical presence, the kind of influence that your your parents do have on you. I just lost my mom in January. Yeah, and know. you know, I just I really just see the impact every single day. I can be doing the smallest little thing and I can hear her saying something that, yeah. you know, when she was alive, I don't know that I would have heard it the same way. You yeah. know, so I get it. So I get it. So who's had the uh gave you the best business advice ever? What was it and who gave it to you? Yeah, I I had some great, great examples uh, along the way. Um I was mentored uh, by two gentlemen uh, from my local church, actually. I was directing the choir at the church, and, and I asked the pastor, I said, I'm going back into business for myself, and, uh, you know, who should I talk to? And he said, well, I'll set you up with these two guys. I think they'd be, you know, helpful to you. And it turned out that uh, one of them was the inventor of the 401k plan. <laughs> And, oh, that's somebody uh, and the, you want to hear from. And yeah. the other guy was a guy that uh, that uh, that uh, that really uh, had uh, started a, a, an adver direct marketing advertising type company and had built it into the second largest uh, uh, one in the country. It took the his company public and then sold it off to the largest. And those were, you know, I would have been really, really intimidated had I known, you know, what their real background was and, and, and what they were. But I think the example that they made for me was one of, uh, of integrity. They were people who came and took time out for a guy that was just starting out again to give him a little bit of advice and support along the way. And uh, I still remember uh, them taking me to introduce me to people and and uh, showing by example what it is to have an impact on the people that you have. And I try and emulate uh, exactly that now with some, with some of the people that I'm I'm working with, maybe not officially, but, you know, just in terms of taking some young people and, and kind of mentoring them along the way and mm -hmm. and uh, giving them a helping hand. So that example is the most important business advice I got in, in, in my life, because every, every action that we take uh, is an action that's observable by other people. In other words, people, uh, the truth, I always say the truth comes out, you know, whether you want mm -hmm. to or not, eventually it does, you can act fake all you want. But but people know, when people are fake, whether they're politicians or, or you know, they know whether they have integrity or not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the truth always comes out. And when you see gold, and you see people uh, acting with integrity, those are some of the most successful people in the world, if you if you're looking for it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So what's been the largest single sale you've had in your business? What was the amount? What were the circumstances? And what did you do to celebrate? Um, I don't know if you look at if you look at um, single sales or something like that. I mean, 
I think of success stories, you know, monetarily, and uh, you know, the 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 biggest moment that I had was the first moment. Let me just put the put it this way: yeah. the first moment. So, um, I I created a joint venture with a guy by the name of Jim Daniels. It was all done via email. I never met uh, Jim Daniels. I never talked to him on the phone. We I had some software that I was experimenting around with, and he had a group of people who were wanting to make money on the internet. And we put together a, a joint venture uh, to build something for his customers that they wanted. They wanted to have more affiliate programs that were that they could make money from. So he said, why don't you put together a, a, a directory of programs that they can sign up for? And uh, long story short, we put together a little website, launched it, and um, Within the first three months, uh, we did a quarter of a million dollars worth of recurring revenue. So meaning that that happens over and over and over again and drove it into the top 3000 sites on the Internet. So that was a pretty big Amazing. initial yeah. success story. And here's the key part of it. It was just by building a conversation with people, finding out what people really wanted to have and giving it to them in a way that uh, that it was easy for them to to take part in it. And the other thing is, uh, I'll, I'll give you this business lesson just as an aside, but it's a really, really important when it comes up over and over again, which is that um, if you want to build an audience and you don't have an audience, because at that time I had no audience whatsoever. Nobody knew who I was. I was just a guy that had been doing all the four casting and logistical software for Pepsi. Nobody really knew me at all. Mm -hmm. But I talked to Jim Daniels, gave him something that was useful to him. And by the fact that um, that he had that audience, we were able to have a huge success. So my my little nugget is, if you're looking for customers now, uh, look for where those customers are right now, because all of those customers exist now, otherwise they're not customers yet, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> and, and they're usually listening to somebody. And in this case, they were listening to Jim Daniels. And if you can provide them with real value, then you've got an audience for life in lots yeah, of cases. Nice. nice. Um, we all get discouraged at times. So what has helped you move through those times when you felt like giving up? Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I, I say this a hundred times a day, a hundred times a day to myself, to other people, because I don't know what else to say. And, and it's really, really simple. And it's going to seem really, really basic, but I I've discovered that the most advanced things that, that, uh, we have to teach in marketing or anything else be, come from the, from the basics. So, uh, I say, I say that over and over again, like, like, for instance, there's three things you need if you need to make money uh, that you need to have if you make, if you want to make some money. And uh, if you don't have any one of the three, you won't make any money. And if you have all three, you will, and they're a product or service to sell and a, um, and, uh, and, and somebody to sell it to an audience and you have to have conversion. So those are the three things. If you got all three, you will make money, okay? So that's a little short short example of something that seems really, really simple, but is actually profound because so many people, millionaires, are forgetting one of those three elements. In other words, sure. they'll create thousands of products and they won't have anybody to sell them to, mm -hmm. or, or they'll create uh, a big audience and they don't build any products or mm -hmm. they just don't have the conversion process down. Mm -hmm. So here's the simple answer to your question of getting through anything. And it's one step at a time. That's the yeah. only, that's the only Still way. Still in the present moment. Still in the present moment, doing the things that you can do right now, because anything that you can't do right now is is i mean if if what you can do right now is plan for the future then plan for the future if what you can do right now is take some physical action that will move you closer to your goal that's how i got from uh, an idea for a movie to a decade later actually having the movie in the can it was saying 
not I think we're going to make a movie sometime in the future, not I think I have this dream that I might execute on. It says, we're making a movie. Do you want to be part of this? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. And Ken, what's your greatest accomplishment outside of your business? I think uh, the greatest accomplishment outside of my business, which is my business, is just the to be aware of the fact that um, I've managed to to live a significant life, a, a life that means something to the people I've touched over the years. You know, whether it's a person in business or it's my family or it's just a a, a, a stranger in an Uber ride. Yeah. Um, the 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 biggest thing that I uh, have in my life is the clear knowledge that um, I've made a difference. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, and hopefully, it's more positive than negative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I've never heard anything negative about you, and I've been in the marketplace, you know, seeing you or what did we what did we say 12 13 years probably so yeah, yeah at least 12 or 13 years it's, it's been a long time so we'll be right back and i would love to hear ken's parting thought we'll be right back hi i'm barbara j facing your mindfulness and meditation ambassador and you're tuned into the profitable coaching conversation show with wendy y bailey be sure to like comment review and subscribe so you're notified when the next episode goes live Hi, I'm Jody Krangle, and you're tuned in to the Profitable Coaching Conversations Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episode goes live. Hi, I am Rodney Dow, and you're tuned into the Profitable Coaching Conversations Show with Wendy Y. Bailey. Like, comment, review, and subscribe now so you're notified when the next episode goes live. Welcome back. Uh, we've been having a really amazing conversation with the Ken MacArthur, and he's been talking a lot about the work he's doing in his upcoming movie. And it's the basis, um, the basis of it is years and years, decades of work that you've been doing around this topic. So I told you before we came back that I already know what your parting thought is going to be. But why don't you share that nugget that you want everyone to walk away from this conversation with? The greatest realization I ever had in my life, you know, was, was basically that you make a difference whether you want to or not. And uh, it's not a feel good thing. It's a reality check. It's uh, let's get out there and do something about it because we have this present moment. We have actions that we can take step by step. And you can make a difference in a very, very noisy world. No matter how many people are out there, you make a difference every single day. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Ken, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. It was so great to see you again. And, I, and let me know on this beauty secret of how you managed to maintain the same looks <laughs> for over a the, decade. It's the happy pills. It's the happy <laughs> pills. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm excited because uh, your movie is on Prime. You can check out the link. I'm going to put it in the show notes. And uh, be sure to follow Ken at the same time. Great conversation. We'll see you next time for another episode. Take care, everyone. Be sure to join the after party at the pro at profitablecoachingsociety.com. Profitablecoachingsociety.com. And we'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks so much for tuning into Profitable Coaching Conversations with Wendy Y. Bailey. Be sure to join us at the after party at www.profitablecoachingsociety.com. We'll see you next time for more sales and marketing wisdom and insight from Wendy Y. and her amazing guests. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you know when new episodes are posted. Mm -hmm.